When you think you have a good idea, and it goes up in smoke, here's your look at the Diamond Select, the Muppets, Bunsen and Beaker Lab Accident, San Diego Comic-Con 2021 Previews Exclusive. Beaker's in a panic because he and Dr. Honeydew have been in some kind of lab accident. Scorched from a small explosion and looking like they just got slapped by science, Bunsen and Beaker feature an exclusive paint deco, as well as multiple points of articulation. Limited to only 3,000 pieces, the pair comes packaged in a full-color window box with fifth panel door, sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. Before we look at these two who've been scalded by science, let me first thank the folks over at Diamond Select that did provide this sample of the lab accent Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker beep, 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 that we can actually have a look at in this review. By the way, FYI, this is a previews exclusive and it was released during San Diego 2021 and is limited to 3,000 copies worldwide. <gasps> Let's go ahead now and measure the figures. Starting things off first with Bunsen Honeydew, he seems to stand exactly four inches in height or 10 centimeters tall. Then on to Beaker, one of my favorite characters from the Muppets. The figure stands five inches in height or about 12 and a half centimeters tall. Both Bunsen and Beaker get a ton of accessories. As you can probably already see laid out in front of the figures are a bunch of lab experiment equipment, which we will be looking at in no particular order. I say that in no particular order, although we will be looking at from the left and working our way to the right, so that is technically in a particular order. FYI, though, all the lab equipment that we're about to have a look at goes nicely on top of the table that right now is behind Bunsen, which in fact we'll have a look at first. The table is molded in plastic, yes. No assembly was required. No, in fact, the table legs were already attached to the table. It's always nice to be able to get these figures immediately out of their packaging and then immediately put them onto a display without having to assemble anything. The table has some additional wood grain added to the top, to the side, and down the sides of the legs as well, and certainly does make for a nice display piece. I really do like when companies include things that actually can house the accessories that they include. Like, first of all, if you're going to be looking at any of the things that come included with these figures, like the test tubes, the beakers, even the telephone, it really is a shame when you don't actually get something with those figures that can have those displayed. You're just going to end up displaying it around the figure's feet. And that's not good for anybody. So I do appreciate the fact that Diamond Select included a table for all the accessories that we're about to have a look at, like I said, in a particular order. Starting things off first, now I'm no lab expert, but I'm going to do my best to kind of go through each one of these. This is a beaker, a somewhat similar beaker to the smaller standalone ones that are right over here. I think the only thing that would be missing in this part is an actual Bunsen burner that would be right down below, because of course you'd be boiling the liquid inside. It seems as if they've likely molded it in this color plastic here. And why I say that, there's a little bit of black bleed, the part that actually holds the beaker in place. Now, this isn't removable. It's all molded as one piece. And short of the fact it doesn't have the Bunsen burner, we're going to put it right over there. To go along with that, you get a rack of test tubes. Some of them are missing, and that's the way it actually came out of their plastic prison in the first place. Uh, none of these test tubes seem removable. And before you say, oh, that's that's disappointing, just think to yourself, if you had the chance to remove these test tubes, what exactly would you do with them anyways? You would lose them. And then you would be sad. And then you would say to yourself, I should have never removed those test tubes in the first place. So I'm actually glad. It doesn't seem that they are removable, and I'm just going to leave them as they are anyways. So you get a rack of test tubes. We're going to put those right over there. You get what I'm guessing to be a mortar and pestle. And normally you would use such a thing for like smushing and mashing out a pestle, like spices, and uh, trying to think of other things you would probably use a mortal and pestle for. Certainly, I would not consider it for lab experiments, but what do I know about lab experiments? Not very much. It isn't removable. It doesn't seem like you can actually move this and take this out at all. So it's something that looks like, I don't even know what they're actually mixing inside. It looks like frog eggs. Isn't that disgusting? But you get a mortal and pestle, we're going to put that right over there. And if that isn't the correct term for that, I do apologize when in, well in advance. You get a couple of, a pair of beakers. I guess technically a trio of beakers if you consider this guy right here as well. One contains a purple liquid. One contains a green liquid. And in both the cases, it looks like there's little tiny bubbles on the inside. I don't know if that's to tell me a well warning that this is going to be exploding sometime soon. I probably should be putting this aside before I start looking like these two. Uh, they are nicely done. And as you can see, they've used a translucent kind of clear plastic and sort of, I guess, colored the bottom base of it. And you get, a, like I said, a couple of beakers. Me, 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 me. We're going to put those right over there. 
The figures also come included with a clipboard. And I hope that you guys can actually see what this says. It says Muppet Labs Experiment Number 221. And apparently the lab, the experiment that they're working on is an automatic waste basket, which as you can see right now is nowhere found with these figures. But it's nice to see that they actually put on a printing that you could even see. And I'm all for advocating the idea of throwing out your waste in your trash. Although I got to say, if you had something like this that you're throwing your trash at, I don't know, I'd be a little reluctant to the idea of throwing out any trash in this for the fear that this thing would think I'm also garbage and want to swallow me up whole. The neat thing about this, though, is that the clipboard fits nicely into the hand of Bunsen Honeydew. Not necessarily this hand, because this hand is actually more pointing instructions to Beaker, because it seems like Beaker's the one that does all the actual mixing of chemicals. But what you can do, though, is on this other hand, literally on the other hand, between the thumb and the pointer, there's just enough space. There's just enough space for a clipboard. And you can wedge that in place. You can also bring the arms up, bend the elbows slightly, and you can have Bunsen Honeydew looking at his clipboard. Again, I don't know what they're really building because if they're looking at this to be their final solution, they don't really have any of the parts I would think to make at it. They got liquids, they got Bunsen burners and beakers and test tubes. Nothing I think would actually be able to successfully build this experiment. Or maybe the experiment is this and they're going to be feeding this thing, whatever just blew up in front of them. I don't really know. Uh, the last thing that actually comes in clear with this set, just put the figure down here for a second, is a telephone. One thing I would certainly recommend, again, not being a lab expert at all, is if you're going to be dealing with chemicals, have a phone readily available nearby at arm's reach. Uh, unfortunately, though, I hate to burst your bubble here, but unfortunately, the receiver is not removable. So I don't know what kind of phone calls you're going to be able to make unless you kind of hold the phone to the side. Oh, wait a minute. The phone is hollow. You're not going to be making calls to anybody. Sorry. But we can, yeah, take the telephone. We'll put that right over there as well. And certainly while we're at it, let's go ahead and remove the clipboard and we'll put this also over here also. So you get, as you can see, everything nicely laid out. You may want to lay this out a little bit differently, but for the purpose of this review, it's just to show you everything is nicely laid out here. Getting though a closer look at Bunsen Honeydew. Now these figures were released before, but not with this blown up effect. All this additional ash coloring of black that's been airbrushed, the, in this case, the lab jacket, the arms, the sleeves, and the face of Bunsen Honeydew wasn't there on the original releases of both the figures. Now, the figures themselves uh, seem to be the same as what we got, the samesies as what we got before, other than just, again, the different coloring color treatment right here. And I like that. I think it adds a little bit something else extra to this. I don't know if I would just say that this is, if I was to buy the one set, this would be my go-to. I would still want to get myself an original Bunsen and Beaker, which I do think I have. In fact, I might have even re reviewed it earlier here on this channel. But this is a nice way to add some additional coloring to those existing figures. As you can see, closer look, there's Bunsen. No eyes whatsoever. I don't even know how he's able to look through. Even if he's got glasses, glasses is fine. But when he's got eyes the size of, uh, well, they're, they're non-existent. I don't even know how he's able to see. The glasses, though, are not removable. It looks like they've actually clipped them in place on either side, just above his ears here. And again, like the face sculpt, I think is the same as what we got before. Just again, that blast effect, the ash effect all over the front of his lab coat and all, all over his face as well. The coloring is really good on this figure as well. Even he has it a little bit on his hand as well, on both his hands, actually. Uh, articulation on Bunsen Honeydew. First of all, we'll look at his head. His head rotates all the way around. It's on a bulge, right? Yeah, so you can rotate it. You can also hinge it up, hinge it down. And if he is, yeah, looking at his clipboard, you can have the head slightly bent down this way as well. The arms do come out very nicely at a 90 degree angle bend. I did notice like the elbows were a little on the tight side. It looked like there was a little bit of paint buildup when I initially took these figures out of their packaging, but it looks like it has freed itself up nicely. So there's a hinge joint there in the elbows, in the elbows, and you can also swivel at the forearms as well. Uh, both of the hands, by the way, also can rotate. They are sitting on peg joints. Uh, when it comes to the lower half, it's a little harder because, of course, Bunsen's got himself the lab jacket. But there seems to be, from what I've tried at least, there seems to be a little bit of a waist swivel underneath that. He does have, also, if you can move back the lab coat just a little bit, he does actually technically have a, a knee joint. You can see it right, right there. A the little knee joint. And then when it comes to his feet, his feet are on ball joints. You can hinge those back and forth. Uh, the figure doesn't have peggles on the undersides of his feet, but even though he's kind of small, I mean, you know, you, you'd think that he'd have a little more difficult time maybe standing, but Sahani Dude actually stands perfectly fine. On to now Beaker. Let's go ahead and pick up the figure. And we've already looked at the fact that Beaker is going to be a little bit taller than Bunsen Honeydew, so it matches, of course, the way he looks in the series as well. I don't know if it's just between the hairstyle, the fact he's a tall drink of water, and the fact just the outfit that he wears. It always reminded me of Kramer from Seinfeld. 
I wonder if they took some inspiration from Beaker. Hmm, possibly. I mean, certainly just looking at the pants and shoes alone. If I wasn't to tell you who this character was, I would look at that and think immediately Cosmo Kramer. Anyways, though, for the face sculpt, though, on Beaker, it's a classic looking Beaker. The disappointing thing about Beaker, at least on mine, is the fact that the white that they've clearly painted on his eyes has found their way also onto his schnoz as well. So there's a little bit of white on there as well. Not unless this started to be the original plastic color that they used and they just was they weren't able to get the nose completely painted. And that's why there's that little bit of white separation right there as well. His mouth isn't a permanent look in his face, so you can't actually close and open and close it. Although it would be certainly very difficult in the case of Beaker to be able to put a hinge joint right there. Because I don't think you'd ever really be able to close the mouth completely. It would always be latched open like this. Uh, on the inside, though, there's some a little bit of additional pink. Uh, it doesn't look like he's got any teeth whatsoever. Uh, kind of just jarring a bit. Are those teeth at the bottom of his mouth? It, possibly it is. Uh, I've never really noticed that even before. I never really looked closely enough at Beaker to realize that he have these jarring looking teeth at the bottom of his mouth. How would he even be able to chew? I'm asking questions that will never really get answers. I do like the texturing that they've actually done to the surface of his face. It sort of really does read as a Muppet skin, sort of that furry kind of skin that the Muppets have. And of course, he's got this volcano top hairstyle, nicely painted in both a lighter, uh, more medium color, I guess, orange and slightly darker strands of orange in there as well. Really nice head sculpt on this guy. And of course, his lab outfit, this would be the same, I'm guessing, as the original Beaker, just again, added some additional exp <laughs> explosion on the front of his jacket, on the sides of his sleeves. He doesn't seem to get it anywhere else. I would have maybe thought that he could have had some of some of it maybe on his face. Maybe that's why there's a little bit of a darker coloring on the bottom, the base of his nose. That's maybe a little bit of what's happened here. He's also got a little bit of it on his face as well. The jacket, something I may have not even mentioned when we looked at Bunsen Honeydew, is generally a soft plastic. Uh, underneath it, you can still see that they've actually sculpted completely the pants. Whether they've actually sculpted, though, a shirt, the only way would, you'd really be able to know is take this right off. And I don't suspect they've been actually sculpted anything underneath it. You get at least the top part of his dress shirt and a tie there as well. Long arms, very large hands. And the hands are sculpted in such the way that you can actually take... They don't hold them well, and you kind of have to really wedge them in there. But he kind of holds the beakers. Again, not super well. I might even just consider the idea of kind of taking and softening up the plastic just a little bit. Because I really feel like the intended plan was to, for him to actually hold something. But that seems to be like the closest thing in proximity that he can actually hold. But he just doesn't hold it well enough. I might even just, like I said, see if I can soften up the plastic just a little bit so Beaker can actually hold a beaker. Uh, he's got some nice plaid work done on the bottom of his pants. Fun looking shoes there as well. Some added some additional cream color as well as some brown there on the side. And they've also sculpted nicely the laces there on Beaker too. For the articulation on this figure, we're going to start things off first of all with his head sculpt. He does have a nice ball joint. I really like the fact that he does be, he has as much posability as he does in his head sculpt. You know, again, he doesn't have any posability here in his mouth, but I feel like that would be a very difficult thing to pull off with a figure like Beaker. His arms do come out. Now, the thing about his arms I've noticed is that they're very tight, tight on the shoulders, tight to the point where I feel like past the 45 degrees, it's telling me don't move any further. You can take that in the arms and yeah, you can rotate them all the way around. This is hard plastic. This is softer plastic here. The figure does have a bend in the elbow. And it does also rotate here in the forearm. You can see like the hinge joint. There's really not a lot afforded here. So when it comes to bending the elbow, you can only bend it slightly. And when you are bending it, really want to make sure that you've got the hinge joint facing the right way. Because if not, you're going to break it. The hinge joint is almost non-existent when you look at it from this side. You can kind of rotate it. There's the hinge joint right there. But always make sure, yeah, you're hinging the elbows at the proper places. Hands rotate all the way around. There's a hinge joint also happening there. The legs and waist also seem to be on a swivel similar to Beaker, uh, similar to Bunsen. His legs split out. You can bring them forward. You can bring them back. There is a also bend lower on the knees. Um, in fact, you can actually see right there, he's got a double hinge joint, a hinge there and a hinge slightly further up. And the figure does have some nice ankle articulation this way and an ankle pivot happening this way as well. I really like this set. This is a fun set, especially if you grew up like myself watching the Muppets. My favorite skits from the Muppets were Pigs in Space, Bunsen and Beaker, and the Swedish Chef. Uh, when it comes to this set, 
I still think I would advocate if you're looking to get yourself a Bunsen and Beaker, still try to track down the original Bunsen and Beaker, but this is a great set to go along with the original release, just simply because the original Bunsen and Beaker don't have the explosion all over their body like this. I think, again, like, I don't know if I would say that this is a stock. If I wanted to have just a definitive Muppet display, I would want to go with more of the lab experiment. I think I would still want to go back to trying to track down the original Bunsen and Beaker, which I still think I have somewhere in storage. But I do like the fact that they've taken figures that were so good in the first place and decided to find a different means and a different way to paint the figures. Not paint the figures drastically, but paint at least the figures that are justified by the type of job and the type of career that they have, apparently making exploding lab experiments. Really nice work from Diamond Select. The only thing I would say about this particular set is I wish that Beaker had a better means of holding things in his hands. It looks like he's close, so, so close to actually holding a Beaker, but not quite there. Other than him having the means to hold an accessory in his hand, I really, really like how this set turned out, the folks over at Diamond Select. I think the key to any successful experiment is trying it more than once. If you fail the first time and it explodes in your face and providing you have survived the explosion, I say try it again. Of course, implement better safety precautions in place, but you may have to change the quantity of the chemicals that you're mixing. Fail it second time, fail it three times, maybe even fail it a hundred times. Sooner or later, you'll get the formula right. And why I say that is while it didn't take me a hundred tries to get that right, I was finally able to get the beaker into beaker's hand. Uh, funny enough, though, it just involved me having to wedge the beaker slightly on an angle, but you can easily actually get it in between his thumb and his pointer finger. And it survives also the blizzard test. That's tipping the figure upside down and it doesn't fall out of his hands. It's when you go to Dairy Queen and you buy yourself a blizzard, they used to at least dump the blizzard over top of your head. They shake it just to show you it wasn't falling out. They don't do that anymore. They do it over the counter because probably at some point it fell on some kid's head and the kid was crying. Anyways, though, the point of that was me, the, my, my, my yammerings was the fact that I did finally able to get the beaker into beaker's hands. That's somewhat ironic. At least the clipboard already stayed in, in Bunsen's hand and it stays fine in his hand as well. The other accessories are sort of just there more to display on the table and that's fine. I at least like the idea that Diamond Select include the table in the first place. There's nothing more bit of a bummer, really, when you get these figures. You get the really cool accessories that go along with them. And then what do you do with them? Yeah, you can put a couple in their hands, but then what are you going to do with the rest of these? If you're going to be getting a character like Bunsen, Honeydew, and Beaker, you really would want to have a table to come include with them. Because, of course, they come with a lot of really fun accessories. And I'm glad to see that Diamond Select included a table. Now, still, I feel I have the original set of these. If somebody could just do me a favor and just check on this channel, see if I had reviewed already the, the original Bunsen and Beaker. I feel like I did. I'm going to have to see if I can track those down. I'm not sure whereabouts they originally went to. But I'm glad to see that they've actually found a use for this mold. These figures, I feel, are too good to get released the one time and one time only. And it was clever, really, on Diamond's part to find a clever use of repainting these figures without drastically changing their traditional colors in the first place. Bunsen and Beaker and Explosions go hand in hand, and I think it's a very smart use of using the same figures and just finding a way to slightly color them differently. Nice work on Diamond Select's part. Now, again, like this one is a previews exclusive Ergo. It's a San Diego Comic-Con 2021 release, and it was limited to 3,000 copies. In other words, if you did have the original Bunsen and Beaker, which I still think if you had the choice, I would still go with the original Bunsen and Beaker if you just want the classic look of the characters. But if you are looking to track this set down, 3,000 copies, you may have to now try to find these maybe in places like eBay or aftermarket locations like websites that are still selling this set. But if you're a big fan, though, of Bunsen and Beaker and you like the idea of their labs blowing up, their lab experiment blowing up in their faces, a great set to be picking up and adding with the rest of your Muppet figures, also produced by Diamond Select Toys. Big thank you, though, to the folks over at DST. That's Diamond Select Toys, FYI, who are nice enough to actually send over the previews exclusive lab accent Bunsen and Beaker that we have a look at in this review. For your video question for today, if you watched the original Muppets show, not that Muppets Tonight crap that came later, a little bit later on, but the original, the OG Muppets show, what was your favorite skit in the Muppet show? Let me know down below in the comment section. And hey, now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, make sure you hit the subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification so you're going to get those reminders of whenever new videos are going to be popping up. And yes, at the very end of this video, popping up will be a playlist of other Diamond Select stuff that I've looked at over the years. Keep your peepers peeled, providing, of course, nothing's blown up in your face. Keep your peepers peeled because there will be more Diamond Select reviews coming your way in the not-so-distant future. And as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.